The movie God's Not Dead was a box office smash. The film had a $2 million budget and it made more than $60 million. Well, one of the stars of the show is with us today. Take a look. Kevin Sorbo is an American-born actor best known for his lead role in Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. He played the muscle-bound demigod in that hit TV series that ran for six seasons. At the time, it became one of the highest-rated syndicated television programs in the world. Sorbo also played the lead in the fantasy film Call the Conqueror and starred in Gene Roddenberry's TV series Andromeda. Most recently, he appeared in the movie God's Not Dead. And the movie God's Not Dead is now available on DVD in case you didn't make it to the theaters. We'll tell you more about that later. But please now welcome to the 700 Club actor Kevin Sorbo. Kevin, so great to meet it's you. It's good to be here. Finally, I made it here. Well, it's I'm good. a little starstruck, so oh, oh, bear please. with me. All right. <laughs> well, the movie did so incredibly well. Yeah. $2 million to make it, yeah. makes $62 million at the theaters. Why do you think it did so well? You know, I think we've reached a tipping point in America. I think people are just, they're just sort of fed up with the number of projects coming out of Hollywood that don't reflect their values and their, for, you know, their, their faith, their morals, whatever it may be. God's Not Dead was really word of mouth, seriously, because Pure Flix does an amazing job with these movies. They're the largest distributor of family and faith-based movies. They've been in the business a long time. This is my fifth movie with them, by the oh, way. Wow. And uh, the first one I did was called What If. People can check out What If. Please do. It's on, it's on Netflix right now. Okay. And I think just, you know, it was strong word of mouth because... You have a $2 million movie, to get in 780 screens is huge in itself, but because it finished in the top two in, in per screen average, it bumped it to 1,400, did it again, they bumped it to 2,000 screens. Amazing. It stayed out there for three and a half months, and it was really because of people wanting to see movies like this. Well, you play a very convincing atheist, uh. a pretty mean guy <laughs> in this movie, and we've got a clip from God's okay. Not Dead of Kevin playing this mean atheist. Let's take a look. Do you think you're smarter than me, Wheaton? Do you think there's any argument you can make that I won't have an answer for? I never said I was smarter. That's the first intelligent thing you've said. I want to make this clear. In that classroom, there is a God, and yet I'm him. I'm also a jealous God, so do not try to humiliate me in front of my students. You know, I also checked up on your declared major one, pre-law. What exactly is pre-law? We don't award degrees in that. Don't bother answering. But know this. If you truly feel a need to continue with this charade, I will make it my personal mission to destroy any hope of a law degree in your future. Have a nice day. Did you say God bless to him right at the end? No, I said have a nice day. Oh, have a nice day. I should have. Day. Actually, God bless would have been pretty funny. <laughs> but, but no. That was one of the most chilling scenes in the entire movie. Yeah. I mean, you were really seriously evil in that scene. And, of course, you're a believer. You love yes, God. Yes, I am. You know, but what attracted you to this part, Kevin? Well, no, number one, i got to give kudos back to Pure Flix. They do wonderful, amazing work. And they sent me the script knowing they said, look, this is going to create a little bit of controversy. It might be difficult for you to even want to play this part. I read the script. I was in right right away. I've got atheist friends. We've had debates and parted as friends, but I also, I, I've seen these, these atheists on television, on cable outlets, and they're so <laughs> angry. Hmm. And I, 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 part of me, I feel pity for them. And on the other half, I laugh at it. I go, how can you be so angry about something you don't believe in? Exactly. Uh, yeah. And why do we give such a large voice to them? I mean, they pull down nativity scenes because they say, say it offends them. Once again, how can something you don't believe in offend it? Mm -hmm. And you're offending 90% of this country by pulling these nativity scenes down. 90% of the country used to have the majority voice in this country. We don't have that anymore. We're losing our freedom of speech. So you're making way too much sense right now. Uh, common sense <laughs> is something that the country, half the country doesn't want to deal with anymore. They hate the truth. And facts and truth are very disturbing <laughs> to some people. Well, Kevin, the truth is you've You've been a believer since you were 13 years old. Tell us, how did that happen? Well, I've been a, a really believer my whole life. I grew up in Minnesota. I grew up in a Lutheran church. I'm, I'm non-denominational now. I go to a church. It's just anybody who's a Christian. Sure. It's called God Speak. And uh, I've always been a believer. But I, I was 13, and I went to, I saw Billy Graham speak at a, at a crusade in St. Paul. And it was a hot August night. And yeah. I just remember it was an amazing experience for me. I walked up front with a friend of mine to meet with one of the volunteers, talked and prayed, and just, it was just, it's a, it's a moment that has been very indelible to my life and has just stuck, stuck with me all these years. You know, so many people have gotten saved through Billy Graham Ministries and or watching the 700 Club. Those two, oh, there's no question. It's, it's just no really question. amazing. Well, you were 
promoting your uh, of course most people know you from Hercules yes um, which yeah. is was an amazing not series not a bad thing it was not a bad thing at all there about. I just played a half god so, <laughs> <laughs> so I, was a, I was a demigod but <laughs> <laughs> right right well there you are that yeah. I mean that uh, there's my wife actually the, you met we met on the set yeah and her name is Sam Sam yes and I was reading in the background information that the first scene you had with her, you were so nervous you forgot your lines. I didn't. I never forget my lines. I hate to say never because I mean yeah. I forgot my. But I, I'm very good at knowing. I come prepared. It's, it's part of my deal. And uh, I was blown away right away. I was smitten completely. Well, I can see why you forgot your lines. She is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, she has her own radio show. Really? Yes. From six uh, to nine in the morning, uh, Pacific Standard Time, the Sam Sobo Radio Show. Check it out. She's number 12 in the country right now. And there's my family. Awesome. That was a, that was a couple years ago. That's a couple I'm years ago. I'm looking at the little mohawk my oldest wanted there. But he's <laughs> he's almost 13 now. He, he he doesn't like that he did that to himself now. They are adorable. They're great kids. Well, things haven't always been as picture per perfect for mm. you. Uh, you were out promoting your first movie when you noticed uh, something wrong with your, something was happening to your arm, to your shoulder. Yeah. I was, um, it was was in a season five on Hercules and I was coming back to do some promotional work on Call the Conqueror and I was about to start my second action movie for Universal. We're going to shoot in Atlanta. Problems with my left shoulder, couldn't figure out what was going on, saw a doctor before they found out what it was. It ended up being an aneurysm in my left uh, subclavicle that completely opened up. It sent hundreds of clots in the arm, but three clots unfortunately went to my brain. I suffered three strokes. Three strokes. And obviously I could have been killed instantly. I could have been in a wheelchair the rest of my life. Uh, the three bullets to the brain, so to speak, two went to my balance center, one mm -hmm. went to my vision. I still have a 10% loss in both eyes. Spent the next four months learning how to balance and walk again. Took me three full years to recover to feel whatever you could say 100% would be after suffering three strokes. Wow. Um, I was very fortunate. I have a book out now called True Strength. Mm. And I've been doing a lot of speaking engagements on it. And it's really a motivational book. It's a, a you know, triumph over tragedy, but it deals, there's a lot of humor. It's not a downer. And it's been amazing on this journey with these speaking engagements. I've had people come up to me that were... You know, car crash survivors, stroke survivors, heart attack, whatever it might be, saying the book has motivated them to stop feeling sorry for themselves because really the book is about not setting limitations for yourself when something happens to you because we're all going to hit that wall one day. Sure. We just don't know what that wall is going to bring. Isn't it the irony of being Hercules and then having this major, almost debilitating injury? It, it was tough to go from a guy that was playing the strongest man in the world to somebody who couldn't even stand up and walk. It was uh, emotionally, phys you know, psychologically, physically, it was, a, it was a long battle for me. Do, do they know what caused it? Was it working out too hard? They have no idea. They, could, they said it could have been something from birth, some biological thing. could have been all the years wow. of lifting weights. I've been lifting weights very heavy since I was 15. Sure. And at the time, I was about 230 pounds, and I was, I was pretty ripped up on Hercules. And, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, they, they don't know. That could have been a combination of stress that I don't know if I was feeling stress. I didn't know because I was loving. I was, I was 14 hours a day and the two hours a day lifting sure. weights afterwards. So a, a typical day, 18 hours door to door wasn't un, unheard of. But I, but I was living recovery. it. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I still have, I, I know what things still sure. I can't do, but uh, most, I've passed every physical exam they can throw at me. So and I'm, you're back in the gym? I'm, I'm always, yeah, I was back in the gym. Well, it took me about a year to get back into working out again, but uh, yeah. I got, I'm back in the gym. Well, back to your marriage. You've been married since 1997, three children. Yeah. 1997, that's a long time to be married in Hollywood. 1998. 1998, oh, okay. So we met, met, met in 96, got married a year and a half later. You know, how, do you, how do you make that work? 16 years. I told my wife in Hollywood, that's like a silver anniversary. <laughs> <And> I, <should, laughs> right. I was supposed to have four wives after 16 years. <laughs> but um, you know what? Uh, I, certainly our faith has a big, you know, plays a big part in it. Our, um, our relationship is just, you know, we, we homeschool the kids. I think that's mm. important. Uh, we decided to do that about four years ago because I travel so much. I've been doing, I've shot about 40 independent movies over the last nine years. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, but we have a new TV series we're pitching right now, so we'll see oh, what yeah. happens. It's in a faith-based world, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm just going to ask you if you have any faith-based movies in the works right I, Well, now. I, I have one done called Revelation Road, which mm. will be out in DVD. It's part three of a series from Pure Flix, same company I did. I've got a couple more that we're looking at to uh, shoot hopefully down the road. I've got a family comedy coming out in theaters in November from Howie Klausner, Howie's most well known for um, Space Cowboys, James Garner, the late James Garner, Clint Eastwood, and Tommy Lee Jones. And that'll be out in theaters, please check it out, called uh, The Secret Handshake. And, and uh, I loved busy. your role in Soul Surfer as well. Oh, thank you. Great yes. movie. There's so many. Well, as I said earlier, the movie God's Not Dead is now on DVD. I encourage you to go pick up a copy wherever DVDs are sold. You're going to watch it, watch it again and again. I've seen it twice already. You want to see it Yay. again. Kevin, it's such an honor. God <laughs> bless you. Thank you so much. You. God bless Thanks you as so well. Thanks so much for being My here. My pleasure. <laughs>